Get a 14 day free trial and 10% off from today's sponsor at squarespace.com forward slash forge. Welcome back. We are making a little utility survival rope cutting knife. Something that's a little bit similar to this example here that has quite a unique mechanism that I haven't seen in other folding knives. The blade that we started on in the last episode has come out of the temper. And so now we need to grind bevels. With the help of a few lovely tools, our bevels have been ground in no time. I used this carbide file guide to make sure that our plunge lines were lined up. And the noble steed that is my five-year-old 2x48 steel grinder performed admirably. It is a fabulous machine. And that's why we sold them at the Alex Steel Co. The last belt I used on it was a finishing scotch Bright belt. This bad boy is going to have a nice utilitarian finish. The edge is not complete, though. It's going to have a secondary bevel. I don't know how I'm feeling about the serrated edge. Depends if I'm feeling bold. Personally, I've never really found the appeal of a serrated edge. You know what, actually, Jamie? Here is a good sidebar. Is a serrated edge actually any good for cutting rope? Let's find out. Test one, serrated edge, loose rope. Wow. That was actually really easy. <laughs> Regular blade, loose rope. That was a little bit more difficult. Serrated edge, tight rope. That is incredible how easy it cuts. That's terrifying. Admittedly, this is not climbing or caving rope. This is just cheap rope. See how much more difficult actual climbing rope is to cut? Wow. That's terrifying how easy it is to cut some rope. OK, serrations are there for a reason. My whole life, I've hated serrated edges. Unfortunately, I think on this project, we're going to need to put a serrated edge. My feeling from those little tests is a serrated edge maybe cuts 20 to 30% easier on the rope. But I feel like I'm on the verge of a little crisis right now with how easy it is to cut a climbing rope. And this makes me feel a little panicky about the fact that on Sunday, Jamie and I went on another caving trip, and one of the many pitches of the day was a 210-foot ascension and rappel, that's 70 meters, on a single rope. And I was trusting my life to something that can just break like that. All right, Jamie, I shall see you down below. Oh, testicle just moved a lot. <laughs> down he goes. <laughs> you smack your head. <laughs> Yep, that's our rope. Uh-oh. That looks so strong. I really trust my life to that. Woo! Man doesn't have fear of heights. So as daunting as it is to consider, just how easy it is to cut a climbing rope when you're on it. It also shows the importance of being able to have the blade have some resistance to coming out. And so when it comes to working on our mechanism, I'm going to be extra careful about making sure that there's a good bit of retention in the closed position so that only when I really want it open does it actually come open. Quick interruption and a little fun fact. Now, Jamie and I have been working together for what's soon going to be coming up on six years. And when I was looking for a videographer, I saw his website filled with his portfolio of lovely video work. And I thought, wow, this looks professional. It looks amazing. Now, Jamie, 
where was that website hosted? It was, of course, Squarespace. Yes. Now, they're the sponsor of this episode. And I go on and on about building your business with Squarespace as the backbone for it. You know it all. You can sell unlimited products. You've got Squarespace point of sale if you've got a brick and mortar. Book clients with Squarespace scheduling. It's fantastic for building a business where you're trying to sell things, but it's also fantastic as a portfolio website or even hosting your resume. Because if you want to stand out above the crowd when you're next searching for a job and you've got a gorgeous looking website that happen to be incredibly easy to build with no plugins, patches, or upgrades ever, it can really help to make you stand out from the competition. You can try it and see how you like it by going to squarespace.com forward slash forge because you're going to get a 14-day free trial. And if you like it, you can use code forge at checkout to get 10% off your first purchase and the discount even applies for your domain. Check them out down below. Let's get back to the video. So now I'm going to put the blade to the side before working on the locking mechanism on it so that I can drill the holes in the back of our frame slash spring assembly because I think I need to start making up the scales. It was all well and good me drilling these holes, apart from the fact that I now do not know what to do. Probably the most critical part of this whole project is our big round pivot hole. And I'm going to need the same hole in the scales. But where the hole goes is going to affect how the locking mechanism works. And now that I have these three holes here, these scales cannot come apart until I have the big hole. They must stay together, otherwise, I could make uh, a real bird's nest of this and not have any more accuracy. Why didn't you glue those together so you don't need these stupid clamps? Uh, I don't know. Because how in the hell are you going to drill it with those clamps? I don't know. It's the problem. It's my dilemma. Uh, you could drill some small holes in the four corners or even in two of the corners, opposite corners. And bolt it. Put some either bolts or even just some little pins. Jamie! Now I feel safe to take this clamp off. Blade sitting on top of it. What about if the blade ends about there? The whole thing has a nice arc across the back of it like that. Now, how do I find the middle of this? So rummaging through the workshop, I found a solution. I had a 16 millimeter shank arbor that I made a while ago for a project. It's got a little Allen screw in it, a five mil hole. So I took a bit of five mil rod, I ground a point on it, as close to the center as I could. So if I pop that on here and eyeball it as best as I possibly can, that should be Exactly where I need our hole. Div it, div it, div it, div it, div it. The profile of the scales is all complete. Now this little bit of tube was in here purely for alignment purposes to make sure that nothing went like that. That isn't the final pivot, but I believe I'm not gonna be making too big of a mistake by going ahead and disassembling this because I think we can now use this opportunity to plan and finish and refine our mechanism. Ooh, exciting! That goes like this, this goes like that. I love how the handle feels. I think it's a really good improvement. I'm happy with the changes that I made from the uh, Petzl one. Right, first of all, that needs to be flat. It's currently like the end of the bar. All right, hold all this down, take my scribe, give that a scribe on that line. So that is where I need the cutout to stop against this. We're now going to scribe using our central hole as reference, the new diameter that our blade end needs to be made to. Now I can scribe how deep this notch needs to go. This now fits in. Check this out. It works, or at least it locks it. 
We haven't yet worked out if it opens it. But it locks it in quite an attractive position. Very tasteful. So I ordered a little bit of 1.2 millimeter stainless wire, but until then, we're gonna have to make do with a drill bit. Get in that hole! That's what she said. So it locks in the open position. I quite like how the angle of the blade is. We might make some tweaks. The handle definitely needs a few little tweaks in the shaping. But the first thing that I'm gonna tackle at this stage is I want this to spring. Because I can press on this all day long and it does not open our catch. It has zero flex. So I'm gonna take to the grinder and begin grinding a big old radius in through here. And bit by bit, we'll hopefully get the spring that we need. If I have ground this too far, this needs to be started all over. The thing I don't understand is how does that pin not stop it from flexing up? That's a good question. I might not understand the engineering of this well enough. It's very possible. We're about to find out. Will it pivot if I press? Wow. It's definitely not pivoting. It's also possible that these two bolts restrain it too much to be able to pivot up. Because obviously in this little injection molding, there's no restraint. And so as you push on that and it springs, the spring can move up to take up the, uh, the slack, so to speak. We don't have that luxury, so the engineering of this might be compromised. Definitely not springing. Kind of like this. There's our pivot. I push down on this. It flexes here and lifts up on the pivot. It rotates about it. It doesn't matter if that's holding it in the middle or not. Actually, maybe it does because it's like slipping down. <gasps> oh no! Jamie! What if it's not a hole, it's just a pin that stops it, and it's not... <gasps> Here, I'm at the nine inch mark. I bend it. Oh no! Oh, I'm an idiot. It's constrained in two areas. So it very well could be this is a pivot, but we would need to modify the design for it to work with this kind of integral frame spring assembly. I've got a little bit of a way to test it. So I don't have the pin through the pivot hole. So there's other bits that are wrong in here. But now if I push down, there is some movement at last. It does lift up just a tiny bit. Start making some risky decisions here. We can take this and before I modify that anymore. Well, at least I don't need to worry about how I break it off from the super glue. So I've prepared this in case this no longer works. So we have the rush measurements ready to go. What I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna carve a groove so that we can continue to see if laying it on the pin is gonna work. Oh, we're making progress. You think you're on the right track? Oh, I think I'm on the right track, Jamie. Crap, it didn't lock in. The notch might be too small now. Yes, it might. It also might have just bent instead of, ah, it just straight up bent, which means that this needs to be hardened. Nice throw. Ah, look at that. Thank goodness the paper's in there. That's worked brilliantly, Alec. Is it more springy? It sounds like a spring. Will it spring? Pivots up, comes down. Press it, it closes. Does it snap? Not very defiantly. That's got a... This has a much mushier engagement, which is very frustrating. Oh, yeah. I've just cut this little retaining groove in the bottom so it won't come open on its own accord until you pivot it, snaps open. That's it for today. We're gonna finish this thing off in the next episode. Big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring us. Check them out, squarespace.com forward slash forge. And please, as ever, go to alexsteelco.com. We've got beautiful belt grinders for you and a great collection of tools and PPE for your blacksmithing and knife making adventures. See you soon, bye-bye.